Hey everyone, Moritz here. I'm very excited to show you the new and improved room sensor which further lowers the power consumption. But first let's talk about a mistake I made in the last video. In the last video I showed that the idle power consumption was very bad with around 1.7 mA, but as I found out now, this is due to the way I am powering the PCB. In my initial testing I was supplying the 3.3V line directly, which is the output of the linear low dropout regulator. Many so-called LDOs have a parasitic diode from the output to the input, which allows for current to flow if it becomes forward biased. This is the case when the input is at a lower voltage than the output. Simply adding a diode to the output of the LDO can fix this issue, but then the voltage drop of the diode needs to be compensated. If the LDO has a feedback or sense input, then you can just connect it after the diode. There's also the possibility to use a low voltage O-ring fed controller, also known as an ideal diode, but those parts are generally more expensive. Now let's redo the measurements by supplying power to the battery terminals with around 4 volts. This results in a far lower power consumption of around 7 mA per second for reading and sending sensor data, 192 mA for updating the display and only 52 mA per second during sleep, totaling 250 mA Before I measured 22, 142 and 306 mA respectively, totaling 470 mA which comes down to a 46% reduction. This results in a runtime of 35 days using a 1 amp hour battery, which sounds a lot better than the previously calculated 19 days. I wanted to verify this with a 360 milliamp hour battery, which is supposed to give me 12 and a half days of runtime. I hooked up a charged battery and waited. It lasted 14 days and 17 hours until it was empty. So the runtime calculation, at least for this short time, is somewhat accurate. With all of that out of the way, let's focus on the new PCB, but first cue the build montage. This video is sponsored by PCBWay, your one-stop shop when it comes to prototyping, whether it be standard, advanced, flexible or rigid PCBs, CNC machining or 3D printing, they got you covered. They even provide PCB assembly for SMD and THD components. Order your PCBs now using the link in the description and get $5 off of your first order. On the new PCB, I added a P-channel MOSFET to turn off the power of the sensors including the light sensor and the I2C pull-up resistors. The MOSFET's gate is also pulled up, so if the GPIOs of the ESP float, it will stay off. The same applies to the reset line of the e-paper display, where I have also added a pull-up resistor. I also added a solder pad to pull GPIO 15 low, which will silence the boot message of the bootloader. This should, in theory, result in less energy usage, because outputting serial data takes time. Other than that, I lowered the CPU frequency to 80 MHz, which is the minimum allowed when using any of the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth functions like ESP now. I also switched to only using a single core and I'm not waiting for the e-paper display to report back when the update is complete and go to sleep as soon as all data is sent. Measuring the PCB showed that reading and sending the sensor data uses around 8 mA, updating the display 85 mA and sleeping 24 mA, totaling 116 mA for a duration of 3 minutes and 36 seconds. This again is an improvement of 54% and with a 1 amp hour battery, this results in a runtime of 77 and a half days. I also did a runtime test with a 360 milliamp hour battery, which in theory should be able to last for 28 days, but actually lasted a full 29 days. Awesome! There are still improvements that can be made. 
First of all, the ESP32 room could be replaced by an ESP32 C3 or C6 or even a completely different MCU, which reduces the energy consumption. But more on that later. If we want to keep the ESP32 room, we could also use an external low power timer chip in combination with a power latch to wake up the ESP. For example, the TPL5111 would only use 35 nanoamps. Though lowering the power consumption while the ESP is active has a larger impact on runtime. The biggest part is still used by the display. With a custom lookup table for updating the pixels, we can reduce the time spent and massively reduce energy consumption. Another project I found out about recently, called Open ePaper Link, already does this to reduce energy consumption. It also uses the stock ePaper price deck hardware with custom software. This got me thinking. Why not upcycle the existing hardware, which is already designed for low power usage and has Zigbee for wireless communication? Not only will this reduce cost, but also fix a lot of issues I am facing with this project. It is also more environmentally friendly as it reduces e-waste. Taking a look at the power consumption, the stock hardware only uses 5.5 mA on average while updating the display and only 2.4 microamps while being asleep. The update, including receiving the image, took at most 24 seconds, which I think is very impressive. But what does that all mean for this project? Well, I will drop the idea of creating a new PCB and focus on creating an add-on PCB, maybe even a flexible one, which connects the sensors to the tech and provides battery management and charging. I'm also thinking about integrating energy harvesting using a supercapacitor instead of a battery, since the power consumption is so low. But sadly, you will have to wait for an update until the next video. If you are impatient, you can check out my fork of the project over on GitHub or join Aaron's Discord server, where most of the development is happening. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thank you for watching.